Welcome to Bratislava, Czech Republic and Russia getting set to meet. Day four gets going here. Ilya Vorobiev is in his second year behind the bench for Russia, and Milos Riha in his first year behind the bench for the Czech Republic. Well, the Czech Republic started this tournament against Sweden, so they've recognized the high quality opponent they need to play and how they have to play against them. Russia hasn't had that kind of test yet, but they will be tested tonight against the Czech Republic, who have been the most impressive teams in our pool through the first few days. Will it be physical? Will it be chippy? Will there be scrums after the whistle? All hallmarks of a good Czech Republic game. Will the refs let them play that way? Will Russia let them play that way? It's to see how the emotions take hold in this building, which is brimming already. Well, I do think we know how the Czech Republic wants to play this game. They want yeah. to take this thing into the mud as quickly as they possibly can. Patrick Bartoszak will get the starting goal for the Czech Republic, and Andre Vasilevsky will get the starting goal for Russia. Both teams 2 and 0. Oh. And this one about to get underway. The referees, Brett Iverson of Canada, Peter Stanel of Slovakia, the linesman of Hannu Suman of Finland, and Nathan Van Oosten of Canada. This one underway here in Bratislava. Dmitry Orlov will skate this up at center. Orlov will send it in off the backboards. Ronick will try and play it around the boards. It got blocked, turned over in the slot, shot right on, and the rebound grabbed off and clear to the corner. Russia to the attack early. Telegan trying to get that back to the line, kept in by Orlov. And now finally cleared out at center ice. Michael Frolik will carry it in. Frolik will play a deep and Head to the bench on the line chain. Zaitsev will play it for Orlov. Orlov back for Zaitsev. And he'll drop it back for Orlov. Up for Malkin. Malkin plays it in and Jan Ruta back for the Czech Republic. And he'll lead for you, Benny Malkin. Malkin floats it out at center ice looking for Andre Palat. Palat sends it in and Sergachev will send it right back up the left side for Dadanov. Dadanov fires it in for Malkin. Malkin back for Dadanov. Dadanov takes it wide. Gregorenko to the front of the net. Sergachev in from the line. And the wrister by Sergachev sailed high and wide. And the rebound all the way down the ice. And Russia trying to create their speed through the neutral zone. Want to have those zone entries with full possession. They don't want to dump and chase it. They don't have to. Sergachev. Through the middle, Kuznetsov will deflect it in. Ratko <laughs> Gudis after it. Ovi coming in to send a message on Gudis early. 
You want to play physical? Watch this. Well, Ovechkin has been quiet through the first couple games, not very engaged in any capacity. I'm not surprised that in a game like this, he'll come out ready to go. Clear back in by David Musil. Up for Repik, and Repik will send this in. Off the corner boards, race for it. Kobosh going in after it, deflected away from him. And up at center ice, and Isimov will carry it in. And Isimov takes it wide on Hronik. What a tournament it has been so far for Hronik with five points. Russia back on the offensive. Kucherov got bumped on the play by Zahorna. And it's up at center and back into the Russian zone where Gusev will take it for Zaitsev. Back for Kucherov, and he'll drop it for Orlov. Left side for Gusev. Gusev tried to go high short side, missed the net. Zaitsev sends it back to the front of the net. Puck is loose. And Moravchuk is there to clear it away for the Czech Republic. And Zahorna will send it back, and Hronik will take it and control in his own zone. The luxury for the Czech Republic is they don't mind matching any of their four lines against anyone. They don't have to hide any lines for defensive reasons. That was their fourth line out there against Gusev and Kucherov. No need to change, just have them play it out. The Horn are trying to work it free as this game does get physical. Oh, big hit. Ilya Kovalchuk stepped into Jan Rutu. Rutu with the wrister and Vasilevsky will grab it and hang on. Wait. Iwaki, Jan Ruta along the boards, and you think you have already got Kovalchuk coming to block a shot. You'll be able to slide down the wall comfortably, and he'll try to stick check you, because that's Kovalchuk's norm, but not in this one. Look at this finish by Kovalchuk. Reach with a stick and just lean into him with a shoulder. Perfect hit. And he roots it to the ground. Ovechkin, Kovalchuk coming out hitting for Russia. You think this game matters to them? Then up the glass, that gets stopped there by Voracek. Voracek trying to work it free, get some help there from Dominic Simone. And Russia now on, this will get flipped to the line. Radko Gudas trying to hold it in against Malkin Kent. Malkin trying to break free and knocked off his stick out at center. Here comes Simone with some room, sends it through for Voracek. In for Folik, and that shot got blocked. Back up the ice, Dadanoff. Hits the line, sends it deep. Zadorov all the way down into the Czech Republic zone, sends it behind the net. Sergachev into the slot, whose net's off, Dadanov, Dadanov walks it in, throws it up top, no one there. And this will get knocked down with a high stick of Sergachev. Chances at both ends. Michael Frolik, who has three already in the tournament. For the Czech Republic he walks into this one, but if Kenny Malkin sprawls for a desperation block in front of the net. Another example of some guys doing things that you may not expect. Kovalchuk hitting. Ovechkin hard in on the forecheck early on. Malkin sprawling to block shots as whoa. Lights took a quick dim there. We had a power outage like yesterday between games. That one felt more like the light show because a lot of the external lights were off and they just dimmed them for intermission. Thought and here we, were, we go. Thought we were back at Biashtani there for a while. <laughs> That's all this building needs right now is a <laughs> power failure light out delay. Who knows what might happen? And the players are so charged up, they want to get her going as well. Last 10 meetings between these two countries, Czech Republic has won six times. Russia started off with three straight shutouts last year. And then the first goal against came from David Krejci about 15 minutes into game four. And Czech Republic went on to win that game in overtime on a goal by David Pasternak. Well, it was the arrival of Krejci and Pasternak in the middle of the tournament that made quite a difference. And we'll talk a little bit about Alex Ovechkin. Him and Kuznetsov, they play together in Washington. They play at times together on the same line in Washington, and in the big ice, you gotta skate. Even Alex Ovechkin, as great of a shooter as he is, has to skate. And they were paired with Kaprizov initially. Wasn't working, Barabanov played well in the fourth line. He's gotten the bump up to this Ovechkin Kuznetsov line, hoping that his speed can get them going. In across for Hedl, Hedl sends it wide, Branov. After it, plays it back for Hedl. Hedl trying to center it. 
No score in the early going of this one. Both teams undefeated so far in the early going of this championship. Sergachev will send a backhander back to the Czech Republic line. Back to regroup as Jan Kolar gets turned over. And then it's cleared, and this will come out. What a missed opportunity. Barabanov, we just said his name, turns the puck over. He's got Ovechkin sitting right between the hash marks. Stick cocked and ready to go, and he puts it on his front left foot. And not even Ovechkin could react fast enough to get a one-timer away. That would feel like guaranteed goal time if you could put in his wheelhouse. Just a missed pass and a missed opportunity. Brady Shea has USA ahead of Finland 1-0 in the other game over in Kosicha. Big day over there. Oh, Jack Hughes versus Kapo Kako. Finland versus USA. Kucherov with the shot, save made, and Repik grabs off the rebound. Michael Repik's pass kept in by Anisimov. Gusev is in front of the net, and the pass was intended for him, but he gets picked off. Back in. Shot by Kubalik, and that shot went wide as Kubalik was looking for the far corner. Right back for Gusev. He'll lead for Kucherov. Kucherov tried to get that back to Gusev. The passing lane was taken away. And Mirachik will grab it off for the Czech Republic. It's amazing how well Gusev can time turnovers or miss shots or broken plays because he is often leaking out looking for breaks. Gudis up for Zahorna. And Heinrich Zahorna in his second game will float this in on Vasilevsky. We'll see two Zahorna brothers. Zainik and Thomas playing on the fourth line with Dmitry Yashkin. Heinrich did not play in the first game as they were kind of holding roster spots for other players who might be available, but once they determined that certain players were not coming, he jumps into the roster. There are 25 spots available. You can add throughout the tournament as late as you want, as long as you have roster space available. Stonichka off the faceoff, pitches this around the boards. Yaskin is after it. Yaskin will play it back, and it comes all the way back for Stonichka. Trying to send it down low. The first attempt got blocked, sends it down for Zohorna. Zohorna got stopped there by Orloff, and Orloff sends it ahead. Ovech, or rather, Kovalchuk plays for Telegin. Telegin sends it rink wide. Andronov after it. Bump in the corner there, and the puck comes loose as Lenichka ran into his man. Puck controlled, though, by Ilya Kovalchuk. He'll throw it cross ice, taken away by Yaskin, and Dmitry Yaskin will send this for icing. That has been a staple of the Russian offense. The winger walks up the wall, and then as the defensive winger for the Czech Republic gets stuck staring at the puck, the defenseman for Russia activates in behind him, and Nesterov tried to jump in there. They had some Zahorna staring at nothing. You gotta be head on a swivel, know where everyone is, because if he will be active on both sides, including Philip Monik, who's currently tied for the tournament lead in scoring with his five points through just a couple games. One of six sitting at five points. Dominic Kubalik and there's another Czech Republic player sitting at five points. We got Kucherov at five as well. Yep. And of course, the sensation Capo Kako. Got everyone buzzing. Scoreless here, 13-21 left to go, first period. Czech Republic 2-0. Czech Republic has not meddled in the last six years trying to take care of that issue here in Bratislava. Boracek will send this in after it. Dominic Simone 
Zadorov is after him. Simone spins it back for Voracek. Has some space in behind Vasilevsky. Tried to jam that in front. Bounces around. And Michael Folik will jump on the loose puck. Folik plays it back for Voracek. Voracek gets wrapped up in behind the net by Gavrikov. And taken by Gregorenko and flipped out. Musil had trouble with that bouncing puck. David Musil after it. Plays it for Frolik. On for Voracek. Voracek will drop for Simone. Back for Voracek. He'll have Hronik open on the near side. And Hronik tried to pass it back to that far side. And there was no one there. Back for Malkin. Malkin gets tied up on the far side by Michael Moravchik. Whose year started in the American Hockey League. And then January came back to play in the Czech Extra League. Played in behind the net. Karabanov trying to spin away from Hronik. The shot that got blocked as Ovechkin unloaded. Brana brings it back in for the Czech Republic. Brana the shot. And Vasilevsky takes that and hangs on. You see the opportunity on the quick counter. We talked about Hronik, how good his start has been. He's a great shooter. He tries to find the stick of Simon, who actually has got his blade up in the air trying to dance around the defense. He knows it. He's got that great release. The challenge Vasilevsky not trying to look for the extra pass. He's on his right side, so he didn't have the chance to one-time it. He probably thought, by the time I catch and release it, Vasilevsky will be over here. If I can find someone back door, it could be a tap. Andre Pallad is after it. Try to get it back to the line for Jan Ruda, and that's cleared out at center ice. Ruda plays it back into his own end. The zone with just under 12 to go here in the opening period. Ruda goes rink wide. Room down that left side, and a Andre Pallad shot just went wide. Rebound to the short side as Grana had the chance. Grana with a two-goal game in this championship already. Another bump in the corner. Crowd reacts with every bump that we've seen so far in the early going. Ovechkin up for Kuznetsov. Rink wide, Barabanov. Or rather, Kucherov. Kucherov plays it back near side for Kuznetsov. Into the slot. Kucherov, the shot block. Rebound. Scramble. Shot through traffic, and that hook caught the right pad of the netminder, Bartoshak. Kucherov sends it back down low. And Sklenicka. Up at center, Repik. He'll play it in. Gusev first on the puck. On for Kucherov. Kucherov drops for Gusev. Gusev got stopped on the play. Kucherov steals and holds it in. Try to get it back for Gusev beyond his reach. And Radko Gudis will snap this up at center. Repik giving chase on half of Zulin. And played for Telegan. Telegan. Backhander from a sharp angle. Floats that one wide. And the rebound all the way back for Dmitry Orlov. For Zaitsev. Zaitsev hits the red line. Chips it in. After it, Gronick. Zohorna for Yaskin. And Yaskin turned it over at the Russian line. And Orlov plays it for Zaitsev. Zaitsev, Andronov, and up for Orlov. Dmitry Orlov centers, and that's intercepted and cleared away by Tomas Zahorna. Stopped there by Kovalchuk. Bounces around and cleared back onto the stick of Dadanov. Dadanov with two two-goal games so far. On for Kovalchuk, and he'll drop it back and Nesterov will have to gather it in. How patient can Russia stay? We know the Czechs will stay with the game plan the entire time. They will put five in the neutral zone and not commit any people forward unless it's a good time to do so. Will Russia stay disciplined with their puck? Management not turn it over into that five-man trap of the Czechs. Dadanov's pass stopped by Dominic Simone. Michael Folik trying to clear it up the boards. Pile up and it's back at the line. Zadorov. Zadorov dishes it off for Malkin. Malkin has some room. Flips it to the short side off a stick and wide. Moravchuk stripped of the puck there by Malkin. Then he gets it back. Banked off the near side boards all the way down the ice. And this will be icing called against the Czech Republic. 
You know, Andre Palat is such a good two-way forward. You don't think of him at the elite level offensive skills, but my goodness, does he ever step into that nice little handle in the middle, dancing around one guy. He's got Sergachev with a bad gap. And it's a Tampa trio, Sergachev, Vasilevsky, and Palat going at it. And a near miss for Russia as well. Bradashak down early in the butterfly. In traffic, he tends to go to his knees and get wide even if he can't see the puck. Moravchik for the Czech Republic in a scoreless game. Jan Ruda gets to center, hammers it around the boards. Andre Palat trying to trap it, can't. And it's out at center, and Radko Gudis is there. Gudis quickly ahead for Vrana. Vrana puts it to the short side. Vasilevsky steered it aside. And Kuznetsov. For Barabanov and back for Kuznetsov, but on the backtrack taken away by Hedl. Radko Gudis, rink wide for Musil, up for Hedl. Couldn't handle it cleanly, it was just in behind him. And Dmitry Orlov will play this for Zaitsev and back for Orlov. And back for Zaitsev. Kucherov trying to dance his way around Radko Gudis, drops it for Orlov to high tip from Gusev, and that got blocked in front. Orlov sends it back, and Musil will take it off the backboards. And on it is Philip Hedl. Plays at the center. Good play there by Repik to make sure that got into the Russian zone. Gusev back and sends it back for Zaitsev. Under seven and a half to go, scoreless opening period. You get a look at this. Checks five guys, so not even committing one on the four check. Trying to slow down the rush of the Russians. Andronov trying to find Telegan, intercepted by Philip Hronik. Gets it to center no further, and Sergachev will hammer it right back in. Around the boards, half of Zulin. Into the slot, score! Andronov gets the opener. And Russia with the one nothing lead. Just a brutal change by the Czech Republic. All three forwards head to the bench on a dump in. I don't know where they think they're going, but a quick play by the Russians to get the puck to the slot. As you see everyone coming off the bench, Bronick's into the boards, and it's a three on two, four on two. Javi Zulin drops it into Andronov, and he tees it up from a prime scoring position. Lateral seam pass into the one timer right between the hash marks. Bartoshak cannot squeeze the glove down to the top of the pad. Underneath the arm, it goes. But you cannot commit three guys to a change when the other team is in onto a four check. So a couple of KHL veterans team up for that. Andronov, the last 10 years in the KHL. 30-year-old Dinar, half the Zula, nine seasons in the KHL. And one nothing. Russia with the early lead. Moravchik for Jan Ruda. He'll fire that in through traffic, and Vasilevsky got down to block it. Yaskin with a bump, and this gets cleared out at center. Ruda back for it for Gudis, and back for Ruda. Radko Gudis. Voracek, Voracek will slip this through for Dominic Simone. Simone puts on the brakes, Michael Froelich, sharp angle, that's off the goalpost. Not sure there was any room on the short side, but good quick release there by Michael Froelich, who's gotten three goals so far in this tournament. Gudis with the blast from the line, it never got through, bounces around. And Vasilevsky will jump on it and hang on. Russia with the one nothing lead.
first of the tournament for Sergey Andronov. Looks like Barkashak may have got a piece of that. It's a one-timer from 20 feet. I mean, you're just hoping it hits you. You try to react as best you can, but that's too close for any goalie to try to really move and, and make a save. Held in by Kolar. Spun around and taken down was Heedle. That brought a reaction from the Czech Republic fans in this building. Centering pass by Brana. That got blocked. The building, by the way, is full. And not a surprise. Very good rivalry between these two countries. Brana after it in the corner. Sergachev plays it on for Andronov. On for Telegan. Telegan, who did not play the opening game, sent up the boards, and this will get cleared all the way down. This will be an icing call against Russia. And Dronov had just eight goals, 12 points on the year with CSK Moscow. We see all the Czech Republic players changing. Telegan takes out Ronick. Now it's a three on one. No chance for Kolar to defend that. And that's the dream stuff right there, right in the wheelhouse. 20 feet away, put it anywhere you want. Androna just leans on it to open the scoring. Jan Ruda plays it down. Kubalik deflects it deep. And Sergachev on it. And this was knocked down with a high stick. You wonder if the Czech Republic guys were thinking, well, it's a dump in. Kronik will scrum it on the wall and maybe leave the corner will give us time to get back to the, to the front of the net. Except it was such a hard ring around, Kronik never got a piece of it. He never even got to slow it down and have do it handled it cleanly and was able to make a nice pass to Andronov. Never got time to, to reset after that bad change. Ruta holds this in at the line, bounces around. Kovash trying to get a stick on it, could not, and Sergachev plays it for Nesterov and up for Telegan. Telegan to center no further. And Kovash will play it for Ruta. He'll drop it back for Kovash. Find some room, takes it wide. Jammed up against the boards by half of Zulin. Back to the blue line, Moravchuk. Looks for a lane, can't find one. And an ill-advised cross-ice pass that Gusev did deflect. Gusev plays it back for Kucherov. His pass was in behind Artem Anisimov. Icing waved off. Played up the boards by David Splanichka. Lenichka gets it back, plays it for Radko Gudis. Long lead pass by Gudis, and this will go all the way down the ice for icing. Gudis, 43 minutes played in two games coming into this one. Showing some different parts of his game as he's Vladislav Treshak, the all time great Russian goalkeeper. See around our hotel a little bit, yes. saw him at breakfast this morning. A strong Russian delegation at the hotel and at the arena. One of the most respected hockey voices, really, of all time. Not only in Russia, but yes. worldwide. Yeah, agree. And you mentioned Radko Gudis. Very much a stay-at-home defender. Physical guy in the NHL, but he comes over here. He's on the power play in the Ovechkin one-timer slot. He plays in every situation. And where is he? A on his jersey. An expanded role for him as opposed to what he's used to. Which you'll see with some of these countries. The guys have maybe a bit more to their game than they otherwise show in the NHL. Yaskin across the line. Dmitry Yaskin pinned to the backboards. Gets into a battle there with Gavrikov. And okay, a penalty now one. coming up. And Evgeny Malkin does not like the call. It's going to be hooking. And the Czech Republic will get the game's first power play. Malkin suggesting that he may have had that chicken winged in uh, his arm, but nonetheless, Cole made. Power play coming up. Czech Republic with the man advantage. Malkin to the box.
power play underway for the Czech Republic. Czech Republic one for five so far with the man advantage. Russia's penalty kill has been perfect, but they've only been shorthanded. This is the fourth time. That is the fewest in this group. Shot from that far side, Radko Gudis, like Johnson just talked about, Gudis positioning himself over on that far side. Power play specialist apparently taking lessons from Ovechkin and line eight and the other big right shot shooters. <laughs> And across, Kronik spins it back at the line for Jake Voracek. Voracek walks it out front, tried to go cross ice for Gudis, and Gregorenko intercepts and clears it down the ice. That's a pass that is so hard to get through there. Every player in every league is so good at knocking pucks out of the air now, it's very unlikely that gets through. Rana sends it around the boards, tipped off a stick, and this will climb its way up into the netting, and we'll get a stoppage in play. Michael Repic had a one-time goal in the last game as well. Very familiar with this rink. He plays for Bratislava in the KHL, and so this is his home rink. Lots of good memories and vibes from this building. Probably gets to stay at home. Like it's the secondary home game. He's got the Czech crowd behind him as well. Jan Ruda sends this down for Kubalik. Power play for the Czech Republic. Kovash Kubalik. Kubalik tried to jam that to the front for Jakob Brana. Nothing doing there. And Ivan Telegan will send this back down the ice. Well, Telegan's had a pretty rapid rise from not even yes. getting a Sniff on the ice to scoring a goal, now on the fourth line, now killing penalties. Playing well, his way up the lineup. When you score about seven seconds <laughs> into your first shift, maybe you get the coach's attention. You gotta get me out there more. Plotnikov actually not playing yes. tonight for Russia, so just the 12 forwards. Uh, actually, 13 with young Kirill Kaprasov is the 13th forward, not getting a lot of ice time for Russia. Power play is over, Malkin is out. Russia now four for four on the penalty kill so far in this championship. Shot by Malkin, and then Malkin takes a shot from Hronik, and Malkin gives it to the official for not calling that. I think you're gonna call my little hook in the hands while the guy's holding my stick. Yeah, and see him reestablish himself, a rule that a lot of players don't know. If you play the puck with a foot in the penalty box, even after your penalty is expired, that's another penalty. You cannot do that. So he jumps on the ice, gets per both feet firmly implanted, gets to the net, takes a cross check, gets to the ref's ear a little bit, right back into the game. Czech Republic now one for six with the mad advantage. Ovechkin with the shot, that's off a leg and wide. Czech Republic on the power play last year, 22.5%. Dadanov had this in the slot, got away from him, and Philip Hedl will play it. Lenichka up at center for Andre Palat. Yaskin follows up back for Palat. And this gets deflected back out at center into the final minute now in the opening period. Another new winger for Ovechkin and Kuznetsov. It's Dadnoff this time. Could be just post penalty kill. Could be Barabanov struggling to find his game playing with the two more skillful players. And Dadnoff's a guy that good players want to play with. We know he's got the four goals, three in the power play so far in this tournament, but whether it's Barkov in Florida, Malkin so far here in this tournament, smart guy who understands how to use the skill of his centerman and get to open ice, and a pretty good finisher. And Yaskin was out with Palat and Hedl, but that was because Grana had been out on the tail end of that power play for the Czech Republic. Dadanoff facing off with Simone. Dadanoff, the goal getter in this game. Centered out front, Michael Folik gets spilled by Kucherov. Moravchik sends it back for Jake Voracek. Folik and back for Voracek, tried to find Dominic Simone in front. And Kucherov back to whip this into the Czech Republic zone. Into the final 30 seconds now, period number one. Voracek goes rink wide for Michael Folik. Folik in front for Dominic Simone. He tried to put that up top. Ruda holds it in, and Voracek had to dodge the referee in behind the net. 
And Dmitry Orlov will send this around the boards. Gusev is there. Gusev gets pressured by Ruda. And the first period will come to an end. Pretty even period. Czech Republic played very well, but one really big mental breakdown on a line change allows Sergan drawn off to open the scoring. one nothing Russia, despite being outshot 8-5 by the Czech Republic. Vasilevsky and teammates make their way off the ice. one nothing Russia, 20 minutes done. So Enjoy Bratislava even more with the Bratislava card. It's the best way to explore the city. You can get free admission to selected museums and galleries, free guided walking tour, unlimited travel by public transport around the city and region, and other discounts up to 50% by your own Bratislava card. More information on visitbratislava.com or its personal information centers.
Shots were 8-5 in that opening period in favor of the Czech Republic. Andrei Vasilevsky stopping everything that came his way. And Patrick Bartoshak got a piece of the Andronov shot. But it does find the back of the net. And a 1-0 lead for Russia is period number two about to get going. I think the Czech Republic would be happy with that first period. Kind of played at their pace, their tempo. Not a lot of rush chances going back and forth. Too many penalties. You don't want to get into a power play battle with the Russians. Just a really bad line change. Other than that, one mistake. Pretty good period for the, for the Czechs. Ronick swings this around the boards. It makes its way all the way back where Nikita Zaitsev will chase it down. Zaitsev trying to send that up the left side boards. Gets all the way out at center and brought in by Ilya Kovalchuk. Ilya Kovalchuk's 87th World Championship game for Russia. Dmitry Orlov sends that left side. Malkin carries in. Malkin tried to pull it to the inside. Couldn't get it around Ronick. Played back to the blue line. Sergachev waits for it on the near side. Gets it. Sergachev with the wrister way wide, way high. Kucherov will play it back down in behind the net. Russia trying to get a bit of a cycle going. Dadanov drops it for Malkin. Balkan plays it left point, shot through traffic, save made Bartoshak. And this gets cleared all the way down the ice as Nikita Nesterov got that one through. Nesterov with just under seven minutes of ice time in the opening period, led Russia in that category. Dmitry Orlov was right behind him. Busiest player in that opening period, not a surprise, was Radko Gudis. Barabanov. Spins this out of the corner, played it back to the left point, but there was no one there as Russia was in the middle of a defensive change. You can almost see Barabanov get more tentative with every passing shift out here with Kuznetsov and Ovechkin, just having trouble connecting with his linemates and their spacing. Icing gets waved off, and Vrana plays it up the middle. Hedl on for Andre Palat, Palat with the shot, and the save made by Vasilevsky. Yeah, so as he sees that every day in practice. No trouble making that <laughs> save on Andre Pollard, his Tampa teammate. 
Well, one of the best defensive wingers in the NHL. He's incredibly strong on his feet and on the puck. Always very difficult to play against guys like that. You're gonna lose every physical battle you've got into them. They just skate through you. Russia won 71% of the faceoffs in that opening period. And they will have another faceoff in the Russian zone as Radko Gudis gets that one in on goal. When you're winning him with that kind of clip, then you don't mind icing, you don't mind maybe some higher risk stretch passes if they don't go the right way because you figure we're gonna clean this up and get out of our end on a one draw anyways. Jan Kovacs, who's taking this one for the Czech Republic, is the best for the Czech Republic at 58.9% coming into the game. He had won 23 of 39 faceoffs that he had taken. This gets turned over. Sklenichka on for Kovacs, for Repik, and back for Sklenichka. Pressure coming. He'll one hand this into the Russian zone. It's taken. By Zaitsev for Orloff, and Orloff will flip this one in. Slanichka back for it, the long lead pass, Repik. Little drop pass for Kovash. Kovash trying to get that back for Repik, it was in his feet. And Kucherov will send it up at center. Zadorov plays it through, Kucherov! It was in behind the net binder and got scooped off the goal line. I think it was Kronik that got it out of the paint. Before it got across the line, Nesterov plays this around the boards, a race to the far corner. Polar trying to get a handle on it for the Czech Republic. Kent, Kovalchuk, and it gets away and gets out at center ice. Ilya Kovalchuk right back in, tees it up, and that's blocked by the stick of Polar. Telegan to the line, Nesterov plays it in. Kovalchuk got dumped there by Kolar. Kept in at the blue line. Down for Kovalchuk, in for Malkin. Malkin tied up there by Zahorna. Tomas and Heineck, the two Zahornas, in on Malnik, or Malkin on the far side. And now it is finally cleared, and now a race for it. And Sergachev will get back there first. First world championship for Sergachev. This gets sent off the boards and back out at center. There is a penalty coming to the Czech Republic. So many men. This seems to be the indication from Brett Iverson. Team Czech Republic, two minutes for three men on the ice. This is a tough game for the Czech Republic on the bench. Bad line change cost them the first yep. goal. Vito Friha is wondering what the actual call. Jake Borchek wants to hear about it. Either way, this Russian power play, which is so dangerous, will get to go to work. Let's see. I mean, I guess Ruta was out early, but that wasn't impact the play. That's a bad call. There, Kucherov could outweigh Barczak to go all the way across, so he stuffs it hard underneath his pad, but you're Bang on, Dennis Kronik on the goal line to get it out of there. But another Gusev Kucherev Kucherov connection. Those two have had instant chemistry. And not only is Philip Kronik putting him in the net, he's, he's keeping them out as well for the Czech Republic. So power play coming up for Russia on the too many men on the ice call. I don't like that too many men on the ice call. I know Ruta jumped and there was a bit of a confusion there, but he wasn't involved in the play. He didn't interrupt anyone skating past him. He, he kind of hung out five feet away from the boards. And eventually once they completed the change, he just slid back into positioning. If that's the standard, then there'll be a lot of too many men calls. Because that kind of confusion, when it doesn't involve touching the puck or interrupting a rush opportunity or impeding someone. Well, better off letting that one goal. Linesman Nathan Van Oosten getting a little attention over at the Czech Republic bench. I'm surprised the linesmen don't cut their hands more often. Dropping pucks on faceoffs, skates and sticks, flying around with incredible ferocity. I mean, it's amazing how hard you go into faceoffs this is the first time they asked me to play center in the NHL in an exhibition game against Anaheim. I was going up against Fedorov. 
I didn't get my stick onto the ice the first four <laughs> face-offs. I was 0 for 11 in the game. That's hard to do. And by the time I came out, my wrists and elbows were sore from banging into them the whole time. It, it's, it's amazing how violent that collision is in a face-off circle. Andrew Sorbonen was the linesman that made the too many men on the ice call. And he was in a conversation with a couple of the Czech Republic players. I think they were looking for some clarification as to what are the standards. Yeah. So Russia goes to the power play. Four for nine coming into this game with the man advantage. Back for Ovechkin. Kaprasov's first shift of the game will come to the power play. Down for Ovechkin. Orloff up top. Kuznetsov on the near side. The Washington Triangle. Kuznetsov plays it back for Orloff and back for Kuznetsov. Kovalchuk and Kaprasov, the others on this man advantage. Kovalchuk sends it cross ice and Ovechkin bobbled it. Battle in behind the net. Jan Ruda trying to work it free. Kaprasov trying to get it back to the blue line. Jammed ahead for Michael Froelich. And Michael Froelich will get it down the ice. Been sitting around for about an hour and 20 minutes with your off. They throw you out into an intense game. Not having moved, not easy. Tomaso Horna steals, tries to jam it short side. And Heinick Zahorna there as well, but holding his ground on the short side was Vasilevsky. Evgeny Malkin. And Heinick Zahorna all over him. It's around for Nikita Kucherov. For Sergachev and back for Kucherov to the goal line for Malkin. In for Gusev. Dadanov is in front. Kucherov ripped that one. And that went off of Sklenichka, I think, and up into the netting. Such a smart sequence by Russia. Everyone knows Dadanov's got three power play goals. So they put one down here. Everyone sucks into Dadanov. That gets Sergachev fake one timer. And that is going in the wide open net if it's not blocked by Sklenichka. You take what you've had success with, the other team reacts to it, and then you go to the second, third option, which of course is the leading scorer in the NHL with a one-timer. Just seamless execution about what they want to do and the next available play as Nathan Van is still getting a little bit more treatment on that finger. That is the argument or the debate, I guess, or discussion on the power play is you do have one more player on the ice than right. the guys that are defending. And, and a good got, penalty kill will right. take option one away. They'll probably take option two away. But can you instinctively find a third option? And is that a good one? Russia can, and it's real good. There are some skilled players on the ice <laughs> for Russia. Sergachev. <laughs> Nesterov gets it into the slot shot. Power play is over. Scramble at the side of the net. Gusev was waiting for it on the far side and never did get to him. Kucherov tried a couple of times to jam that through. Balkan back in. Dropped back in from the slot. Quick shot by Sergachev. That went wide. And gets jammed up and we get a stoppage and we get a little activity as Dmitry Yaskin is in the middle of it, now Musil. Russia with the lead. 
Sergei Andronov with the goal in the opening period. The last time the Czech Republic won a gold medal was back in 2010. Yep. They beat Russia 2-1 in the final. Players that are in this game that were in that game. Jakub Voracek for the Czech Republic, Artem Anisimov, Ilya Kovalchuk, Yevgeny Malkin, Alex Ovechkin for Russia. Yeah, that Russian team came over and were stacked late by late arrivals out of the NHL playoffs. Mentioned this earlier about Kovalchuk is 87th. There's a shot by Ovechkin, save made 87th World Championship game. Of course, when he came from the NHL back to the KHL, he was available every year for this championship. Well, as this championship has expanded, it's gone from a nine-game tournament to a ten-game tournament to get all the way. Uh, you're talking about eight, nine appearances, maybe more for Ilya Kovalchuk. As the 11th time through for the captain. Around the boards for Radko Gudis. Sklenichka ties his man up. It's kicked ahead, but not out. Ovechkin gets that in front. Barabanov was all alone. It's amazing how clean he was, Barabanov. Ovechkin drills that to the short side and Bartoshak down to make the save. And now like a simple skate to stick pickup, which every player in this tournament could do from any country. He, he must, almost because he's nervous, playing with those big guys. Out through center, no further. Kubalik will send this back in on the left side. Collision in the corner as Dorov takes a run at his man. Out to center, or at least to the line, and now out at center for Barabanov. Odd man rush, Ovechkin pulls it back, lets the shot go, and Radko Gudis got in front of that, and now the net comes off the peg, and we'll get a stoppage in play. Couple chances for Ovechkin, you see his frustration. Here's the one-timer, that's a nice seam pass with his nets up, and Bartoshak gets across to make sure there's no room on the short side. And right prior to that, he did make the nice feed to Barabanov in front. Just a mishandle. As Kuznets on Ovechkin have not yet clicked in this tournament. Nets off who will celebrate a birthday during this championship. Shot off the face off, doesn't get through. Kept in at the line, half the Zulin gets to this in front of the net. And a penalty now coming up as Andronov, who has the only goal in this game, is going to go for tripping. Team Russia, number 13, two minutes of tripping. Off a broken chance. Andronov has the puck on his back end right here. He's going to swing it towards the net, and he just can't quite find it. Michael Frolik, another good defensive play. We can't open it into the feet of Frolik. Vorobyov, let's you know what he thinks of it. And a chance for the Czech Republic, because in the second period, not a lot of activity around Vasilevsky, not a lot of difficult saves for Andre Vasilevsky to make in this game. It'll be time to test the Russian goaltender. And the big line for the Czech Republic comes out. Dominic Simone, Michael Frolink, Jake Voracek. Kronik and Radko Gudis will complete the power play. 0 for 1 in this game. And 1 for 5 coming into this game. So 1 for 6 in this championship. Here comes Frolik for Voracek. He tried to slip back to the back door. Simone goes in after it. So does Frolik. Cleared away there by Nesterov. And this will get flipped high in the air and back into the Czech Republic zone. I want Voracek to, if he can, button the hook with that puck and not just throw it to the net. How to get a setup going. Dump just outside the line was Heronik as Barabanov got a piece of him. Fans trying to get into this thing and get the Czech Republic power play going. Hito. Carries it in, drops it back. Jan Ruda goes cross ice. Moravchuk plays it to the corner. 43 left in the power play. Hito the shot to the backside. 
Vasilevsky down, Andre Palat plays it back for Ruda and back for Palat. And that shot to the short side off a stick. Heedle's going to hold it in, though. Heedle into the slot. Yaskin was getting ready to fire it, and it got intercepted. Orlov carries in. Orlov down low for Artem Anisimov. Little redirect on the short side. A strange setup for the Czech Republic on the power play. Got Moravchik, a defenseman, playing in front of the net and also on the goal line extended. It's such an unnatural position for a defenseman to be in with the puck in the offensive zone. Maybe if it's a big body in front of the net, but sliding off to play the goal line doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Power play is over. Ivan Telegin trying to bust his way through. He got ridden out on the near side by Hronik. And now back up the ice, Kubalik. On for Kovash. Kovash near side. Backdoor play, Vrana. Played it to that offside. There was no one there in a white jersey. Polar breaks it up. Hronik, who was late getting back, almost had a breakaway out of it. Gregorenko giving chase with Polar. Gusev waits for it in the near corner. Back for Malkin. At the line for Malkin. Front of the net it comes and taken away by Hronik. He'll send it ahead for Vrana. Vrana goes to the forehand, trying to find Kubalik at center. And Dadanov will bring it back in for Russia. For Malkin. For Gusev. Tried to snap that quickly and it went off the end of his stick. Balkan jams it to the side of the net and then ends up in behind or in the corner in the Czech Republic zone. Good battle for a puck. Won by Russia. Sergachev cross ice. Ovechkin blasts that. Kolar blocked it. And cleared down the ice by Kobosh. Our intel department, the trusty Kevin Pratt, when the fans are jumping, when the Czech Republic fans are jumping the way we saw them, basically the translation is, if you are not jumping, you are not Czech. Okay then. You thought he was just another pretty face. Yeah, Third around the board. as well. <laughs> Sklenichka throws this up at center. Yaskin rink wide. So Horna sends it around and Nikita Zadorov is there. Ovechkin waits for it. Ovechkin takes a bump from Radko Gudis. Comes back to Ovechkin and up for Barabanov. Barabanov gets pinned there by Zahorna, and Sklenichka's on it. Sklenichka tried to fire that, and Isimov got a stick in there and prevented it. Odd man rush. Gusev across with Kucherov. Big save, Bartoshak. Kovash. Zahorna. Zahorna pulls up, spins this down to the corner and around in behind the Russian net. Zaitsev will play it. Frolik trying to work it free. And this will get flipped up at center ice. Russia back in on the attack with Kucherov to Gusev. Scores! Bartoshak got a piece of it, not enough. 2-0 Russia. These two, again, the cross and drop is causing problems for every team that they go up against. They had the two-on-one, Gusev with a beautiful pass to Kucherov earlier, and a great save by Bartoshak, but it starts with this backhand, 60-foot sauce. Here's the first two-on-one, right under the stick. What a pass, and a better save by Bartoshak. But then Kucherov, a rink-wide saucer pass, gets it to Gusev. He cuts inside, and a little confusion. That's Ruta and Moravchik. They both go to Kucherov on the drop, and the roll to the middle. Gusev's wide open. We saw the exact same thing with Kucherov being on the receiving end earlier in this tournament. That time, he puts it on the Gusev stick. He goes backhand, rolls it up and over Bartoshak, but you got to talk that out. One. Try to hold the blue line. Don't let them cut to the middle. That's difficult to do. If they do, then you got to slide off and don't chase the guy underneath. Stay in your lanes. If you're in the middle, let Gusev skate in you. If you're wide, let Kucherov skate in you. So if you're Patrick Bartoshak, you're saying, okay, it's the scoring champion of the NHL yeah. and the scoring champion of the KHL. 
Good with luck. two great chances. Thanks for coming. Two nothing Russia. Two nothing Russia on another goal by I'm gonna start calling them the dynamic duo. I mean it's Gusev and Kucherov, it's Kucherov and Gusev. The two of them together are absolute magic. What a sense and feel they have for each other's game, and Anisimov knows enough to go to the net or get out of the way. They have been great first couple games. Penalty coming up. Dynamic duo. And interference from a guy on the bench. Wow. I, I Peter Stano with the call. Kovac going to the box. Number 43, two minutes for interference. It looked like he was pointing at the bench. Rihat not happy at all. That's a too many men penalty. A bad change goal against, and now an obscure interference call by the box again. And so Russia. Now has a chance to shred it out a little bit if they get one of this power play. You mentioned dynamic duo. They keep doing what they're doing. By the end of the tournament, they may be an iconic duo. Those are hard to find and are very rare. They are putting up some numbers. Captain along the boards, rushing to the power play. Kovalchuk plays it back for Orlov. Kuznetsov tees it up, rips it to the short side. Save made. So Horna after it, he'll slap it. It is off the stick of Ovechkin. It does make it out the center ice. Kuznetsov will deflect this in. Sklenichka puts it off the boards. It doesn't get out around where Ovechkin will wait for it. He'll get pressure into the near corner, grabbed off by Kuznetsov. Back to the line, it goes for Orlov and back for Kuznetsov. Kovalchuk directing traffic, getting Orlov in the middle of the diamond. Bit of a different look. Kuznetsov rink wide for Ovechkin, and that got tipped Not there. by Tomas Zahorna. Everyone on the bench had to be careful. Back up boy, Sorokin with the quick hands to make sure no one gets any pucks in the face. And Kucherov, six point. I don't know what's going on in the other game, but he might be the tournament leading scorer at this point. Gusev got five himself. And the problem with that first power play, they are really adamant about trying to get Ovechkin the puck. One option. This power play, we've shown, could score from several different spots. Cross ice feed. Sergeyev waits to get it back from Gusev. Kucherov and Malkin had to get out of the way of that one. Kucherov on it again. Malkin, Gusev, down and off, and the shot went wide. Came to the side of the net, and Michael Frolik down low to help out will clear. That power play set up behind the net, I think we will see more and more of that as we go in the NHL. Oh boy, watch out, Malkin right in front of the net. Tough to eyeball the puck behind the net and also maintain a feel where the coverage is in front. Kucherov at the line, being pressured there by Repik. Gusev takes it back, finds Dodonov to the middle. Just a little one touch on for Gusev. Gusev watched by Yaskin, deflected. What a pass by Sergachev. Sergachev gets it back and he misfired. 
The first one, I'm not sure Kucherov was expecting it. I think he tipped it up into his own shoulder. There's an angle there. Yaskin steals in tight backhander, and Vasilevsky makes the save off Kovac. And another save by Vasilevsky off of Yashkin. Czech Republic with some chances, but trailing 2 0. Lots of history between these two countries, both on and off the ice, but 1963 to 1971, USSR, nine straight gold medals, and that streak was snapped by the Czech Republic in 1972 when USSR ended up with a silver. Czechoslovakia at that point yet before they split. Battle in the corner. Andronov trying to center it back out to the line it comes and back for it is Zadorov. He'll bank it off the boards out at center. Deflected in by Kubalik. Zadorov. Artemini Isimov waits for it on the right side. Gavrikov will carry it in, drops it for an Isimov, and the wrister caught and held by Barkashak. And some chances for the Czech Republic. Lazy turnover, and it's Kovac in alone. Tries to go backhand, but Vasilevsky is so athletic, so quick, that he is hard to beat post to post. And you gotta really sell a, a shot fake to get him to freeze. Kovac does do a good enough of that, and there was not much for him to shoot at when he got the puck to his backhand. Vasilevsky stopped 25 of 27 in his first game of this tournament. 926 save percentage coming in. Alexander Georgiev had the shutout against Austria, stopping 15 of 15. But he's not backing up this game. Right. Ilya Sorokin, New York Islanders prospect, and a good one at that is backing up. He's the third goalie on this team. Russia's goaltending was so good last year. They started this tournament with three straight shutouts. It was the game against the Czech Republic. We mentioned this earlier that they finally, game four, allowed a goal against. Dominic Simone, sharp angle try, and Dmitry Orlov jumps on the loose puck. Orlov will send it up at center. Barabanov trying a little toe drag, gets it to the front of the net. Rebound, Ovechkin got a whack at it. What a toe drag there by Barabanov, and another good save by Bartoshak. Dominic Simone for Voracek, and Voracek shot went wide. Simone on it again, leaves it. Barovchuk the blast blocked by Gregorenko. Simone throws it down deep, gets his own rebound off the backboards. Simone gets hogtied there on the far side. Clear but not out. Half to Zulin, and his arms wrapped around. The Czech player shot by Hedl on the goal line. And Vasilevsky manages to hold it out. Avi Zulin hooked Hedl's stick just enough that he could not get to the rebound. Yaskin takes it wide. In is Ruda. Save made. Czech Republic with some big time pressure here late in the second period. Down by two. U.S. was up on Finland 2-1. Finland got one late in the first to cut that to a one-goal game. 
Buck 38 here left in the second period. Another full building here in Bratislava. Dadanov will wire this around the boards. Ilya Kovalchuk takes a jolt. And Kovash will play it to the near corner for Stranichka. For Kubalik. Kubalik will send it in. Sklenichka takes a bump from Dadanov. Gavrikov back for it. He'll play it at center. In for Malkin from Dadanov. Leaves for Kovalchuk, and that shot got blocked as Stranichka got in front of it. He's blocked a couple this period. Kubalik trying to find a little room, could not, and a quick up for Malkin. Malkin tried to feed that to the front of the net. Kucherov was in full flight, but the pass never got through. Zaitsev will jump in from the line. Gusev trying to get a stick on it, knocked away from him and up the ice for Vrana. And bounced away from him, but Vrana made sure it got outside of the Czech Republic zone. Back in for Orlov. Barkashak to save, rebound. And it was intercepted by Sklenichka. And Sklenichka takes Kucherov down. And play goes on. Michael Frolik for Dominic Simone. Dying seconds of the period. He tried to get that in front for Hronik. And the second period will come to an end. Hard fought game. I like this one for Barabanov. Not looking for Ovechkin. Just doing it himself. That's what he can do so well. Dances Moravchik to the net. Ovechkin on the rebound. And Bartoshak was good, as was Vasilevsky the last five minutes. And I think the Czech Republic will try to cling to the offense that they generated the last few minutes of that period. Here's a great chance for Hedl, but the double stick check between Javi Zulin and Vasilevsky keep the Czech Republic off the board. 40 minutes done here in Bratislava. Russia one in the first, one in the second, 2 nothing after 40.
Andrei Vasilevsky has stopped all 16 shots from the Czech Republic. And Patrick Bartoshak was much busier in that second period. He has now faced 20 shots. The two saves on Kovac and on Hedl late in that second period by Vasilevsky are significant one to keep the two goal margin, of course. But this building, these fans are ready to explode. They're waiting for something to latch onto and kind of have that frenetic pace to a third period. Vasilevsky keeping him off the board, calming everything down for his team. Russia with wins over Norway and Austria, 2-0. Czech Republic, 2-0 with wins over Sweden and Norway. And Sweden and Norway is our second game of the day here in Bratislava. Canada and Slovakia, the second game over in Kosice. Chance in front of the net, Ronick! Dished in front for Folik, and he couldn't drive it through either. Now Voracek from a sharp angle. Ronick trying to hold it in, and he does. Voracek tied up with Orlov, and the puck is for Simone. Dominic Simone trying to leave it there. Michael Folik back for Voracek in a battle with Orlov. Czech Republic trying to start a line change. Dumped on the far side was Ronick, and there's going to be a penalty. Rodick right now is looking like John Klinkberg out there. He's going straight rover. I mean, he's going wherever he wants in the offensive zone. He's up on the rush. He's down the wall on the pitches. And he draws a penalty to Ivan Telegin on a bad first shift for Russia. Giving up chances. Telegin loses body position. You see that open hand grabbing on the shoulder. I think Rodick went down in as much as he was spinning, trying to make a play as it was the pull, but it looked bad. So the Czech Republic get to go to their power play. And speaking of John Klingberg, on his way over, Alexander Wenberg expected to be in the lineup in the next game for Sweden against Norway. Today. Yes. Klingberg in their next game in a couple days. Power play for the Czech Republic, third of the game. Russia's penalty killing in this championship, five for five, perfect so far. Andre Palat. Throws it back for Ruda. He'll shovel it back for Palat. Handled by Hedl. 
Ruda, Palat, Ruda, and that's off a stick in front of the net. I think Yaskin got a piece of it. He's testing his stick to make sure it's all right, but it goes up into the netting. Feels just a little mechanical up top for that Czech Republic unit. Yeah, Ruta at the top of the umbrella with Palat and Heedle, and a little bit slow in the puck movement. Not a lot of threat or activity down low. Easy for the PK to make reads. Simplest thing for penalty kill is when you know what they want to do, you can stay in the way and do a pretty good job covering it. So when you're not sure exactly where they want to attack, they make you think. That's when things get difficult. Czech Republic was better in the face-off department in the second period. Tomas Ahorna won 4-5 now in this game. But there's been a couple of Russians who have been very good. Evgeny Kuznetsov has won 8 of 11. Sergei Andronov has won 7 of 10. It's rare because Kuznetsov is hit or miss in the NHL. There's games where he's not that interested in taking face-offs. Like Evgeny Malkin, for that matter. And Simon with a attempted pass down that far wall gets intercepted and cleared. And Michael Frolik will go back and regroup. Frolik with... Three goals in this championship. One on the power play, one shorthanded. Radko Gudas plays this behind the net. Kovac going after it. It came out front. Ends up back at the line for Hironik. Misfired on the shot. Stays with it, though. Sharp angle try off the pipe by Brana. Little slow developing with Hironik, but he got it done. Kovac and Vasilevsky with Frolik on the doorstep. That's better. Now it took a lucky break at the blue line with Bronick panning on the puck, but Rana beats Vasilevsky from way out. And a nice slap pass to Kovash after that. Coming off the line, giving a different look, popping and moving. Gets a good chance, and here's a shot. He just beats him clean. And Vasilevsky just waves at it. He's got his glove up there. He just misses it. And as Rana rings it off the bar. I think he was expecting the curveball. Well, he got the heater. Yes. And he missed it. Power play is over. Telegin is out. And Russia remains perfect on the penalty kill. Ilya Kovalchuk will send this in. Ripik couldn't handle it. Telegin back to the blue line for Gavrikov. Bounces around in front. And a great defensive play by Heinick Zahorna to come down low and bat that puck away. Moravchuk, who has seen plenty of ice time in this game. He kills penalties, plays the power play. He's just under 15 minutes coming into this third period. Evgeny Malkin gets to center, sends it in. And Barkashak, former Canadian Hockey League Goalie of the Year with the Red Deer Rebels. Jammed away. Speaking of the Western Hockey League, big game seven in Prince Albert tonight. Vancouver Giants and the Prince Albert Raiders. 2-0, Russia with the lead. Here comes Hedl. Dishes it off, Andre Palat. Boy, that's about the third good luck that Palat has had in this game. This gets cleared over the glass. It was this deflected out, they say it was. Yeah, caught the glass on the way out. Czech Republic have come out skating, pushing, and what a rush by Hedl. He's a slight guy, maybe not even 180 pounds, but he skates through the sticks and the traffic, and then a really good backhand pass to Palat, whose shot was actually blocked by Sergachev to the corner. Can't say enough about the fan support that we've seen here. It's been amazing. In no. this championship. It hasn't been a quiet building for a game yet. Barabanov gets his own rebound, played it to the backside. Shot from Zaitsev at the line, blocked in front by Sklenichka. Voracek for Simone, Dominic Simone of the Pittsburgh Penguins, plays it down for Voracek of the Philadelphia Flyers. Michael Frolik of the Calgary Flames out front, and Evgeny Kuznetsov of the Washington Capitals has it. On for Dmitry Orlov, he'll leave for Ovechkin, as the Washington trio tries to connect again. In for Michael Frolik. Let's the shot go in Vasilevsky the save. Frolik plays it in behind the net, and Dmitry Orlov will settle things down. On for Zaitsev, rink wide for Gusev. He has the second goal in this game for Russia. 
Knocked away from Artem and Isimov by Kovash. Orlov plays it around. Moravchik is in from the line. Grana backs him up. Grana shovels a backhander down low. Cross ice for Jan Ruda. Tees it up. Save made Vasilevsky. And the puck cleared down the ice. Race for it, Kucherov. And Moravchik trying to line Kucherov up. Gets a glove up in his face. Stick is caught in the arm of Kucherov. Maybe more Kucherov's doing than anything. And across for Kubalik. Leaves it for Vrana. On the line, change in front. Backhander off the post by Tomas Sahorna. They may take a look at this. Sounded funny, but I think it hit the post. Not the high-pitched ting, more of a thud. But a good look as the Czech Republic outchanged the Russians. Zahorna jumps off the bench. You see the Russian player coming off their bench and clean off the bar. That's two now. Vrana, Zahorna. The backhand tough to read. And Vasilevsky's nowhere near that. He doesn't see it coming off the stick very well. Some hands were in the air, but the goalie's best friend bailing out Andre Vasilevsky. Tomas Zahorna will take this face off. And Andronov, who's had a good day in the face-off department as well, out there for Russia, and he'll win it. Nesterov plays this around. Nikita Zadorov going in after it. Zadorov couldn't catch up to it. Kept in by Repik. Collision on the far side. David Musil went down. Zahorn is on it, trying to center it. Heinick Zahorna up with the loose puck. Plays it at the line. Slap shot, Rona. In front of the net, Ronick drilled that one through. The rebound was there briefly for Repik, and now it's cleared out of play. 13:47 left to go in the third. It's 2-0 Russia. Two nothing here, two two in Kosicha between the United States and Finland. No points for either Jack Hughes or Capo Kako. It is not dynamic, eh? Going up against a guy you're battling for the first overall pick. Interesting matchup. Game within New the game, you'd know exactly what he's doing out there. New Jersey Devils might be keeping a close watch on that one. Ray Shero and company. Rangers can't lose with whatever they yep. got second. Orloff across the line, and that wristers off the stick of Radko Gudis and up and down a play. Czechs have had their share of chances. They've had a nice push the last three, four minutes of the second. They've carried it over through the start of this third period. Mishriha working that gum hard, trying to find a solution. But a couple posts in the third period, they could be closer than they are. His first world championship. And they've put together a very good squad. Kovash. They will not be an easy out. Wherever, no. Whoever meets them in the quarterfinals, whatever that checks might be seated, first, second, third. It's going to be a tough matchup for somebody. Czech Republic does not play again until Thursday when they will play Latvia. Every team gets a two-day stretch off at some point in this tournament. A little sightseeing, a little team bonding, a little fun around the city, and then settle 
settle in for the, the final stretch into the, the knockout games. Russia plays again on Wednesday against Italy. One of the teams along with Great Britain that came up from the Division I championship last year. Up through center. Under 13 to go now in this third period. Moravchik starts the rush for the Czech Republic for Hironik. Hironik takes it wide, throws it to the front of the net. And now the net off the peg. And the nets are coming off quite easily. In behind the goal is Andre Vasilevsky. Has been good as of late. Pretty quiet first 30 minutes in this game, but then started seeing some shots. And when he's at his best, he's calm, but he's also so athletic on the second and third attempts. And he's also been helped out by a couple of posts here in the third period. The likely Vesna Trophy winner with Tampa. As Tampa will be well represented at the awards ceremony yes. in Vegas in a couple of weeks. He led the NHL in wins with 39. I wonder if all those guys will go back for that. Vasilevsky will go back, and Kucherov will go back, and Cooper, or Cooper will probably go, but you know, it's a long way to go from Europe, but you wonder if everyone will come. I hope they I'd do. I'd like to think they will as well. I'd be encouraged by the organization to make an appearance as well. I agree. I think it would be a little bit of a sour taste if they yeah. did not. And still recognize the almost historically great year they had down in Tampa in the regular season. And it was a terrific year. John Cooper maybe explained it the best. He said for, I think it was six or seven days, we couldn't find our game. And by the time they did, it was over. After having it right where they wanted for six or seven months. Yes. In across for Honick. Again, tried to go to that back side. Maybe look for a rebound versus a yes. pass. Or just blast it through the legs. See what happens. Nestor off up for Telegan. You're a left winger for Russia. Be aware when 17 in white is on the ice. He is jumping up all the time, joining the rush. You can't let him beat you up the ice. You have to have your head in a swivel in the defensive zone. He's sneaking in every time he's out there. A nice progression for him. Saginaw on the OHL when he went to North America on to Grand Rapids. Yep. Then to the Red Wings and accounted himself very well last year with Detroit. In the corner for Gusev. Gilt's turn on the forehand. Artemisimov will give chase. In from the line is Orloff. In for Gusev. Good left pad save. Bartoshak. Voracek is after it. Played to the line. Trying to get it out is Kubalik. He won't, but Simone will. And up for Voracek is cross ice pass. Picked off. Kucherov to the front of the net. And the shot from the far side from Gusev. And the save by Bartoshak and now Radko Gudis. It looks like he's just going to take one. It looks like Anisimov only. We haven't seen in the Czechs' first two games. Almost every whistle, there was a scrum, there was pushing and shoving. Haven't seen much of that in this game. And. Guys, nice, back off. Team Russia number 15, two minutes for roughing. When you want it to stop, you take one. I don't know at this point in the game, it's been a pretty clean game. You're not really needing to control the temperature of it. It's not escalated to that point, but Anisimov picks up the rough by himself when Gudas, a little shove, a little pop to the face, and ah. It's, it's tough, it's tough to pick just one. Second time in this championship, and this is the third game for the Czech Republic, that Radko Gudis has been involved in an incident and it's been the opposing player who has been the only one sent to the box. He's so innocent. He's just out there trying to play and everyone's picking on poor Radko Gudis. All this pushing and shoving. He just wants to get to make a change. Fourth power play of the night or the afternoon for the turns in the night. Repek going backside and Vasilevsky got a stick on that before it got across to Brana. Goaltender's responsibility is anything that's going through the crease. Any pass that's going to hit the blue paint, you want to be able to get your stick turned over and get a piece of it. Vasilevsky recognizing Verona driving the back door. Does exactly what he's supposed to. Czech Republic power play one for eight now in this championship. And Russia so far six for six on the penalty kill. Kubalik. 
And Vrana tried to play that back to Kubalik, misfired. Yeah, it's so frustrating. You're out in the power play, you win a draw, you have full possession, chance to get something going, just a bobble puck. Repik with some speed. Curls up in the corner, plays for Kubalik. Kubalik can rip it. What a good read by Grigorenko. They're trying to work the handoff there, but if you're Kubalik, you got to drag Grigorenko more to the middle to give Verona a bit more time. You kind of pass your problems right off to Verona with Grigorenko on his hip. Out comes the Voracek unit, and with 54 seconds left in the power play and 10 minutes now left in the third period, an important final part of this power play. Ivan Telegan will steal. And Telegan will send it in. He'll go in after it. And Ronick will get there first. And Radko Gudis will start the power play. Drops it back for Ronick. Snaps it in. Vasilevsky was out to play. It came off the referee. Voracek to the front of the net, a redirect by Simone, and Vasilevsky snaps that left pad out. Frolik stuffs it around for Gudis. Back in front off a skate, cleared. Power play over. Voracek down to Voracek. Voracek for Voracek! And he shot it wide. It may have ticked off somebody in front. And Isimov carries it back in, and Isimov curls up, Russia changing. And it's around, and Yaskin is there for the Czech Republic. Put it right onto the tape of an Isimov, who took a bump from Gudis. And then Barbashak makes the save off Malkin. It remains 2-0, Russia. Nothing Russia after a couple close chances on that power play for the Czech Republic. The high slot Sadin tip for Czech the Hedo with a nice pad save, and then the one time by Hirona. We keep telling him to shoot the puck, you see why. As he challenged Vasilevsky on a one timer. Vasilevsky has been very good. Gaskin plays this in. Zadorov may have taken a yeah, but he's interfering with him anyways. Arm up high, but get out of the way. He won't get hit. Kovalchuk. And contact at the line with Ruda and Dadanov. An offside is called. Dadanov trying to hold that line. There's the goal scorer for Russia with four in the first couple games. Very nicely. Carter Jack's been good. Goalies have been good. It's been yes. a good game. Two evenly matched teams. This is not Russia running over anybody. This is the Czech Republic hanging right in there, generating their own chances, just haven't had the finish yet. Bartoshak, part of the Calder Cup championship with Manchester. Czech Republic back to regroup. Zadorna plays it back. And taken there by Ronick. The two Zahornas out there now, along with Rippet. And this is going to be an icing call. Another one trying to stay on side. Couldn't quite sign it up. And old and young, they are here supporting their team. Never get tired of seeing the different nations, countries, flags, jerseys in the crowd for these games. 
No school today, it is Monday, isn't it? There are life lessons to be learned in the hockey rink, Dennis. And well, they're having one. Just look at all the youngsters who got to stay up for that basketball game last <laughs> night, and yeah. they will never forget that. Kuznetsov being watched there by Tomas Sahorna. David Musil into the mix. Kuznetsov gets it back. Nestor off the shot. Save made Bartoshak. Up for Repic. Michael Repic gets squeezed out by Sergachev. Vasilevsky almost gave that back to Repic, but it got away from him. Darabanov takes it wide on Radko Gudis, and Gudis wraps him up in the corner. In with a solid jolt there was Ovechkin. And now Gudis takes Darabanov down. Ovechkin mows over Radko Gudis. And they play on. Splanichka tried to get that through, bounces, ends up on Splanichka's stick again, and now sights up for Russia. Long lead pass, and Isimov lets the wrister go over top the net. Zaitsev waits for it. Zaitsev dishes it off. Gusev the shot, and into the left-handed catching glove of Bartoshak. One way to get yourself going, even if you're as good as Alex Ovechkin, is get involved physically. And when you move your feet to hit people, it translates into the rest of your game. And for Ovechkin, he can be a force in this way as well. He's not just a guy looking to get a hit to get going. He can run you over, he can hurt you. He can take a healthy charge at even someone as solid as Gudas. And from Gudas, you give it, you take it. He knows that. He's got no problem yep. with it. He should expect that every game. You seal the center and sends it in. Six and a half in regulation in a 2 0 game. You seal from the line, and that never got through. Malkin. In on New Seal. Malkin takes it wide, throws it to the back door. <laughs> Dadanoff has Kovalchuk in front. Couldn't yeah. get it to him. He had him for a quick tap in. Kronik leads the charge. Simone up high. Moravchuk with the shot, and he blistered that wrister wide. And Moravchuk will chase this back into his own end. Hey, Russia shortened the bench, too. Kovalchuk out there instead of Grib Garenko. Golik trying to find Hedl. Yaskin is after it. Yaskin in the corner in a battle with Kuznetsov. Nesterov there as well. It's around the boards. Ruda in from the line against Ovech, or rather against Orlov. Or no, that was Ovechkin. Out again here for Russia, back to the line. Ruda to the front of the net. And Kuznetsov will send this out at center. Hedo will wind it up. Forgot something. Now the pass is into the skates of Sklenichka. On for Andre Palat. Pressure from Anisimov. Good job by Russia in the neutral zone, turning them back, not giving up any seams. Now Spanichka backhand pass and. It's not offside. Rana. Is that offside? I didn't think so. But the linesman has the whistle and <laughs> he thought it was. He's the boss. 2 0 Russia.
with under five to play, the Czech Republic have to get even more aggressive, activate their defense, maybe take the odd chance, even if it results in an odd man rush going the other way. Here comes Malkin, tried to get that for Dadanoff. Zaitsev at the line, the shot blocked in front of the net, puck is loose, jammed away, Kovalchuk off the pipe. Goal post, blocker side by Ilya Kovalchuk. Orlov back into his own zone. Straight up the ice, chips it in, heads to the bench on the change. Michael Frolik on for Ruda. A bouncer wide of Vasilevsky. And taken and sent off the boards, but not out by Gavrikov. Backhanded in front, Simone to Frolik. For a check back to the line. Bouncer from the line from Ruda as he misfired. And Moravchuk will go back for it. Taken by Simone. Through for Borek, check back for Simone. In for Michael Frolik. And that got cleared away by Anisimov. Kept in at the line. Frolik plays it back to the blue line. No one there. It's hard finding shot lanes for all these Russian shot blockers. Any wrist shot is unlikely to make it. Nice pass by Hronik. In on the attack was Palat back for Gudis. And again, couldn't get it to the net. The Telegan go, my goodness. Ivan Telegan in a race, but... And now Telegan takes Hronik to the backboards. Hronik comes up and gives Telegan a shot with the lumber. I guess it's not lumber anymore, but... The composite. Yeah. The good speed, trying to beat an icing. And Ty goes to the defensive player. A little shot in the back. Now that is a embellishment by Hironic as well. But you do what you got to do to try to draw a penalty. He called him. Oh, both of you. And don't blame him. Here's the shot from Kolchak you mentioned. Wow. Bartoshak, no, no idea where that is. As the seize part, right when he shoots it, everyone gets out of the way. Dadnoff spins out of the way, and it's a clean look in on the post. And the ears for both boys will be ringing after this game. So they are calling Gronick as well for unsportsmanlike for the embellishment. Yeah, and that's the correct call. If you're gonna give the rough to Telegan, fine. You have to give the embellishment to Gronick. But the advantage is now down two goals, four on four, you pull your goalie, you have the power play. So I often tell, if you are smart enough to be able to pull it off, if you're trailing late in the game, if you can get coincidental minors, try it. Try to get a rough and a pop back in the face because four, five on four is more effective than six on five. You see the little push and the flop and I guess the uh, sportsman like on Ronick might have been for that shot with the stick. It's too. for the embellishment. And that's exactly what he did. He just tipped over trying to get a penalty. I don't blame him. It works sometimes. So they drill them both for unsportsman like conduct. If I'm, you know, three out though, I'm thinking long and hard about possession and getting the goaltender out. You need two. So, hard to check up by the hash marks now. Getting ready to go. Maybe see if you win a draw if you get possession. Yeah. The got one leg over the boards, ready to go. Vasilevsky leaves it there for Zaitsev. Bartoshak will make his way back into the net. And we're not giving chase, and this is going to be an icing call. And uh, with the way that Russia has controlled the faceoff circles, for the 60% of the game. I understand the hesitation initially. You don't want to give up a clean win, clear empty netter. If you can scramble one with 2.51 on the clock, you still probably wait a little bit longer before just pulling them. Bartoshak, by the way, became a father for the first time on Saturday morning. He played Friday night, went back to Ostrava. Son Damien was born at 9.32 and came back in time for the game that night. Amazing, how's your, and he beat Sweden on the Friday night prior to. Prior to, didn't play on the Saturday. What a weekend. That's pretty good. 
at the line for Radko Gudis. Barter Shack to the bench for the extra attacker. On comes Kubalik, and it gets turned over. Andronov at the empty net, and it got blocked by Dominic Simone. Two goal lead, even if it's four and four, you get an ice and you take a crack if you have it. Voracek will send this in after it for a leak. It got blocked before it got all the way around the boards. Dmitry Orlov stopped there by Michael Froelich. Voracek on it as well. Trying to dig it off the boards though. It goes to an open corner and Gavrikov will be first on it. And he'll play it out at center. Radko Gud is tied up there by Gregorenko and they'll say Anisimov was still inside the line and play will get stopped. You don't mind the whistle there, probably forcing Bartoshak back in the net. Yeah. With the faceoff coming outside the blue line, not a bad idea by Grigorenko. Coach Riha is moved to the front of the bench, old school style, walking in front of the players. Arms yep. crossed, trying to figure out how to break through this Russian defense. Gets the clipboard from assistant coach Robert Reichel, so if there is a stoppage, we may see a timeout, and he'll try and draw something up, but they need to. There he goes. And Bartoshak back to the bench. Boravchuk will take it to the line in for Brana. Partially stopped, Brana stays on it. And the backside play by Kovash never did get to Kubalik and cleared down the ice and another icing call here against Russia. I'm not sure if Andronov realized the situation there. And here comes the timeout that you predicted. Robert Reichel, short hair in the back. I probably wish he could draw a play with get Reichel on the ice because he was a great player for the Czech Republic and a good NHL player as well. The five on four for 13 more seconds than the guys will come out of the box, turn into a six on five. You need two, so you can't mess around, win the faceoff, run your set, and then you get it to the you get it to the net. Take your chance on rebounds and, and tips. And that will be the reminder, I'm sure, for Milos Riha. Faceoff on the left side. You can win it. You'd like to have a left-handed shooter maybe slide out for a one-timer possibility. If that's not there, then get to the net and crash to that net. So the all-important face-off, and it will be Kovash, who is the Czech Republic's best face-off taker. He will take this draw on his backhand. And drawn off was 70% through two periods, so he's no slouch either. Yep. And they hunker in. Andronov's goal in the opening period of this game right now stands as the what would be the game winning goal if this ends this way. Michael Froelich chases it back. Brana winds it up. Jacob Brana to the line, dished it off, no one there, and into the empty net on the far side. Lights up. He's getting called to the bench. Underappreciated guy. We know from his time in Toronto, he can kill penalties. That's, he does almost the full two minutes of every game. And that kind of reaction tells you what the team thinks of him. But they are having that much fun. It's not just a third goal to cement the game, but turn it over. And if you have it on your forehand with a two goal lead, with over a minute to play, you shoot. You shoot and end the game. And Zaitsev eats the mathematical advice on the odds and puts that one in for his first game goal of the tournament. A hard fought win for Russia in this one. So the Czech Republic will fall to two and one. Take on Latvia on Thursday. Russia will go to three and all with back to back. Well, I won't say it yet. Clear down into the Check end of the ice. What's that, shutout? Ladies and gentlemen, that was the voice of Mike Johnson. <laughs> Not sure I <laughs> <by> impact. <laughs>
Zahorna throws this one cross ice. As they, off by as they snap it past yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to get another face off. Oh, boy. Deep in the Russian zone. And I got a message here from Andre Vasilevsky yeah, for you, Mike. Exactly. Now, Czech having beaten Sweden in the first game. Russia haven't beaten the Czechs. The last game of the, tur of the round robin pool is between Sweden and Russia. Yes. So if Sweden wins that one, there will be three teams with one loss, each beating each other, and then it gets complex. Shot from the line, blocked in front of the punch blocker save there made by Vasilevsky, and this will get flipped back down into the Czech Republic zone, but it'll land flat and won't go all the way down the ice. Palat plays this through. Simone goes in after it. Gavrikov is there to take it away. Chased to the far side by Kucherov and Yaskin. Centered in front, picked off by Sergachev. And it is back-to-back -back shutouts for Russia. Georgiev, 15 saves for the shutout the other night. And Andre Vasilevsky with 22 saves for the shutout. And Russia will go to 3-0. It was a different kind of game for Russia. They had to play hard, it was defense, it was tight. And they need a good goaltender. They got all those things. And once again, Kucherov, Gusev, there, is been, there has been no answer for those two in the tournament so far. A goal in each period for Russia. Andre Vasilevsky is perfect. Russia wins it. 3 nothing is the final. medailista a majster sveta v ľadovom hokeji a takisto člen Siene Slávy IEHF a pán Michal Horák, zástupca spoločnosti Raiffeisen Bank International. The best player of team Czech Republic, number 32, Patrik Bartošák.
Andre, first real test for your team. Uh, you got a shutout. How did your team help you out? Yeah, you know what? Uh, guys played really well in front of me and uh, didn't give up much. I uh, didn't give up lots of scoring chances, but you know, uh, uh, there, there's a good team on the other side, so that was a good test and we passed it well. As far as yourself, you get to watch your team play on the power play quite a bit. Uh, they didn't get a score on the power play this game. How did the Czechs manage to shut you guys down? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, a couple in the showers uh, on the team, and they know how to how, how to hit and uh, how to uh, how to play against us, and uh, that's why we uh, we got a couple bad penalties. But you know, our PK uh, we were were uh, pretty good on PK, so that's why they didn't score. And as far as the team moving forward, are you guys happy with how your team game is progressing? Uh, you know, it's just uh, only played three games, so we'll see in the future. We, we have to be prepared. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Radko, you managed to keep uh, the Russians off the score sheet on the power play. How did the team do that? Uh, I think we pre scored them pretty well. Um, everybody had their role. Uh, we played a little more patient than the other teams did, and uh, I think they threw them off guard a little bit. So uh, it worked out for us. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, we couldn't connect on any goals today. Obviously, a loss, something that the team didn't want. But what did you learn about yourselves in this game? I think we never quit. You know, um, we we got better as the game went on, and uh, we need to still work on starts. So uh, for us, the start was. Uh, not what we wanted, and um, they took the lead early, and they uh, they just played with it. So um, for us, we need to have a better start and um, continue building. And for yourself, you don't really get that much time on the power play usually. What are you seeing out there now that you're on it? I'm getting more comfortable, uh, making some plays. So uh, it's new for me, but um, I'm enjoying every time I get to spend some time on there and uh, trying to help the team in uh, any ways I can. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.